Are you tired of your shifts taking longer than that meandering story from your significant other that includes information that is not relevant to the story whatsoever? Then have we got the product for you. We're so happy to bring you our short shifter for six-speed manual transmissions. With this short shifter, gone are the days of tired arms from obscenely long shifts. Gone are the feelings of rowing a boat, and gone are the minutes, nay, hours, between shifts. That's got to be the best part I've ever seen. So it would seem. With simple removal of your selector or counterweight, you can shorten your shifts. Our short shifter gives a reduction of 30% for both front to back and side to side. And by swapping out your factory end links with these end links with spherical bearings, you can remove the OEM links that have rubber bushings in them that are softer than the Pillsbury Doughboy. Hey. Again, to get that precision we want out of our shifter, we're gonna put spherical end links instead of these sloppy joes. So if you're tired of shifts so long that they make your arm feel like it's gonna fall off, purchase our short shifter, which is so good, it'll make you say, holy shit. Uh, holy shift. Now that we're done with all that nonsense, let's talk about the product itself. So this is for six speed manual transmissions. This fits pretty much all current model VW and Audis uh, with six speed transverse transmissions. This includes the front wheel drive and all wheel drive versions. This would be Mark IV, Mark V, Mark VI, and Mark VII models, as well as the A A3 and TT. So both all wheel drive and front wheel drive cars. If you're not sure about application data, feel free to check out the product page. Link will be in the description below. You can check out the application data and let's get into our install. So our stuff comes disassembled. We will need to assemble one or two things in this process. So here there will be your bushings that we're gonna show you later, but this trim has to come out and then we're gonna remove this stud to put that in here. And then included with your hardware is gonna be this nut. It's a 13 millimeter and we're gonna spin that on the back side and snug that down. We're going to put our hardware into our end links here. Now, we have two different end links here. They all take the same hardware, and as you take a look at the back side here, there's a machine for the nuts to be captive in there. Now, what you can do is just lay them in there, and then I recommend threading all of the screws in place to make this install much easier. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my screw and just from the bottom side, thread these into these holes, and that way you don't have to worry about any of these things falling out during your install. It'll make your life a lot easier if you do it this way Thread, threading it on after the fact is gonna make uh, this a little bit more of a headache because you could drop these nuts. Now we're gonna put our stuff on our other side as well and get the bolts threaded in as well. All right, now we're ready to go to our car and start our install. Now we're gonna start by removing our air box and we do that first by taking the spring clamp off and we're gonna pull that forward. If you don't have spring clamp pliers, we will link to them in the description where you can find them. You don't need to have spring clamp pliers, but frankly, dealing with these uh, spring clamps without them is a nightmare, so it's not super fun. Next, we're gonna take our secondary air hose and this vacuum line off. Now this vacuum line, depending, you may be able to pull it off. I think this one's been off before, so we probably can just pull straight back and kind of wiggle it like that. You may need to take like a small screwdriver or a pick and kind of get it in there to help it slide off, uh, but ours did pull off. The, the secondary air clamp, let's take a look over here. You're gonna squeeze this connector right here and then kind of wiggle this off. If you have a Golf R, you don't have secondary air, but on any GTI Mark 7 car, you are going to have to. Now, to get this air box out, we're just gonna pop it up. It has grommets that it sits on that we just have to release it from. And then you're gonna hook it underneath and pull it up and out of the way. Okay, so for the sake of the video, we're gonna be taking the battery and the battery tray out. The 10 millimeters here, a 13 millimeter that clamps it down and then 10 millimeters that hold the tray down. We're gonna remove them. You're not gonna necessarily need to, but for the sake of the video and as much visibility as possible, we're gonna do that. And now we are ready to shoot the rest of our video. Now we are gonna remove this nut right here. That's a, th a 13 millimeter and should be able to just crack that loose and spin that all the way up. After we've loosened that nut, we're going to lock our transmission in place. 
So there's a tab right here, which actually locks it in place. And this is the shifter. Now, if you're in neutral, this should be able to move up and down like that. If, it, if it's not, then make sure you're out of gear. So what you're gonna do is apply some pressure on this tab and then push this down and you'll see it move in just like that. Once it moves in, you can kind of, it will lock in place. You can kind of pull this up towards the top of the car, up like this, and you can see it's pointing up now and then this shifter should be locked in place. So if you push it up and down, it shouldn't move. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is get this cable off here. We're gonna take this pick, pop this up, and you can see it kind of just, once you get it past that tab, it goes over. And we're gonna save this and pop that up and out of the way. Now that should be able to come off now. There's a plastic clip right here that's gonna slide up this way. So you're gonna have to pop that out and pop it up. So you just pop it kind of up and top both sides off like that, and then you can slide it up and out of the way. Now we can pull this straight back with that clip removed, and we can pop this up. So that just wiggles up like this, and out. If you have a hard time getting this off, these splines sometimes get a bunch of dirt in there and they're hard to come off. You can kind of grab both sides and you're gonna rock it back and forth like that. You also could maybe spray some penetrating oil in there. It might help release things a little bit. Okay, so to release this end link from the shifter cable, we're gonna slide this up like so and then forward and it'll lock like that. And you can see it will move back and forth on there. And this cable end link should come out completely and be free just like that. So once you're there, what you can do is rotate this entire thing back to get clear past there and then out from the transmission. So with, until, you, until you take it out of this cable, you can't get it to rotate back far enough to actually pull out of the trans. We're gonna do the same thing with this transmission end link just to get it up and out of the way and just slide it off. It locks just like so, and we can remove it. Now we need to get the shifter in here set in place so it's locked down. So we'll have our new end links properly adjusted. But first, we gotta get rid of this nonsense that we did. Uh, you may or may not need to do something like this for your DIY, but we have a lot of painter's tape to remove from our shift knob and, and uh, boat or um, emergency boat or to be specific. Now, to remove this, you first have to pop up the trim around the shifter. Now this one, has a BFI shift knob on it and this thing comes up pretty easy. So you're just generally gonna grab your fingers underneath the edge here and kind of pop this up. There gonna be some clips on the bottom side there and clips on the back side there. You kind of have to grab your fingers in and pop it up. Uh, again, this car has clips on it that are broken. So we can't show you that easily, but because the clips on this shifter are broken, we're gonna to link to a video where we actually showed a DIY on a BFI shift knob that will give you a little bit better accurate depiction of how this thing actually snaps off. We'll link to it in the description below. Okay, so now we're gonna work on our shifter alignment. Normally there would be a special tool that you would stick in this hole and then you find your location. You also can use a five millimeter drill bit. It's gonna get you the same result. Just make sure there's not a, that there's a backing on it and it doesn't fall straight into your shifter box. And all you're gonna do is insert it here and you can feel that, make sure you're in the hole. And then you're gonna kind of move your shifter around to find the hole. Now I can give you a rough idea of where the orientation is, is roughly in this general vicinity to the left and then up. But you'll feel it when it kind of drops into place. And if you take a look here, you can see the orientation of it locked in place when we get to it from the top, just to give you an idea of where the shift knob should be roughly to get there. And as you can see, we got it in and we're all set. Okay, so now we're gonna install this base plate that goes onto the transmission. It has splines that actually line it up with this shaft here. Now, this shaft is actually locked in place towards the transmission on the car, but in our circumstance, I'm showing you off the car so that you can see what it looks like. So you can see right there, there's all these lines that go around it the whole way, except for this one spot right here where it doesn't. On our shifter, we have a dimple right there that shows you where that's located. So this should help you lo line it up a little bit easier and actually drop it in place and it should just drop in place like that. We're gonna go do it on the transmission now. All right, so we're gonna drop this on our trans and it's a little bit harder to see when you're, when you're in the car. And the other thing about this is, is if you're having trouble getting it splined, do not force this thing in place. You should be able to find that locating spot. Even if there's a little bit of dirt in those, in those splines, first of all, I'd try to clean it out, but then kind of wiggle it down. Okay, so here's our shifter piece. We're ready to install it on the trans. You need these bushings. So uh, ours are a little dirty because we've been using them, but uh, that is 
the first one goes in like that and then we put this in the trans. Okay, so all you're gonna do is fish that end in and then wiggle that in place. Then we're going to take the other end and wiggle that one in place like so until it sits flush. Okay, so we're gonna slide this Delrin piece in place here, it just shifts right onto that nub and then we're gonna use that to go down and then slide onto the back side there like that. And then we can put our clip in right here. It just slides and then locks. Now we're gonna thread on the nut that goes on top of the selector here. This is something we're gonna tighten later after we've unlocked our transmission. Now we're ready to put on our end links. So we're gonna start by installing the short one. And again, open that up just like so. And then you can put, feed your cable in there like that. And then you can take one of your Allens, put it through that spherical bearing and thread that right in. Same thing with the long one, you're gonna open it up and slide it in place. We do have these pry notches set up here so that if you wanna remove these because they bite down on the cable real hard, you can stick a screwdriver in there to pop these things apart to come off. You can snug these bolts down by hand and we're not going to be torquing them in place until the selector pin has been unlocked from the transmission. Next, we can tighten down our cables. Now these are all four millimeters and these nuts in the bottom are captive. So all you can do is, th I would recommend threading them all by hand first. They are locking nuts on the backside so they're not gonna go all the way down by hand, but you do wanna thread them as much as possible. And then you can proceed with a ratchet or uh, if you're using something else, you can do that. Okay. One other note is we installed it this way. If you wanted to, you can swing it around this way. It will be easier if you have the battery box out to tighten them down that way. Just keep in mind, you won't be able to tighten these once you reinstall the battery box in the car if you do tighten them in this manner. Now, one other note, because of the way this is designed, these nuts can be captive, but if you're not threaded in all the way, they can jump past it. So you do wanna make sure when you're tightening these down, you hold the nut on the back side so that it's in, in its groove when you tighten. And you can do that pretty easily on the other ones blind. And on these ones, obviously you can see I'm holding it while I'm tightening. But once you get it past a certain point, you don't need to hold it anymore. You can just snug it down. But if you do not hold it, it could end up getting stuck over top of the, of the link like this. And then you'll end up tightening it down like that. And the nut won't be captive the way it's supposed to be. We're all set now. So we have installed everything. We can unlock our pin here. Turn it down, and then you should be able to wiggle this out. And then we're gonna go unlock it in the car. We're gonna pull our pin out. Most important thing you wanna do after this is make sure you have all your gears. Neutral, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, reverse. Okay, so now we're gonna tighten these Allens down six millimeter again, and we'll include that torque spec on screen for you. We're gonna finish up our install by tightening down the selector nut on top. Once you have verified you have all your gears, you can put the car into reverse to ensure the shifter doesn't move when you go to tighten it down. Now we're at probably the most crucial point in this install. This is a nut that you have to torque properly. If you don't, you will snap this stud off of this. If you snap the stud off of this, you'll have to replace that entire tower that we just showed. This is the tower that bolts into your transmission. This is where that spline. So if you snap the stud off of this, the only way you can replace that is by replacing this entire piece. Now, this isn't terribly difficult. Transmission doesn't have, have to come out of the car to do it, but you do have to replace this and this thing's like 400 bucks. So don't break it, torque it right. So we're gonna snug this up and we will include that torque spec on screen for you. Again, make sure you torque this thing, otherwise you will have a bad day if you snap that stud off. And once you do, you're good. If you do not have all your gears, the most important thing you're gonna wanna do is make sure your adjustment's good. The way you're gonna do that, lock your pin back down here, loosen your shifter links out there, and then you're gonna reset your pin again and get everything locked down again. If you do that properly, you should not have any problem finding your gears. And if you do have too much wiggle in here when you drop a pin in there, if you use the wrong size uh, or you have too much play, you might have issues there as well. We've now completed our install as evidenced by our empty box. Now 
you can go test drive your car and enjoy. Holy shift. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, be sure to give a thumbs up and subscribe for more like it. And if you'd like one of these shifters, you can purchase it on our website, shopdap.com. Links in the description below. Bye.